Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time to stumble into style. It has been a really long time since I made my last video. As they did for many people, the events of 2020 and thereafter really put a kink in all of my best laid plans. So I took a break from social media for a while so I could focus my energy on all of the changes that were happening in my life. However, there appears there will be no end to the chaos anytime soon as can also be seen in the fact that I wouldn't normally film in here. The lighting is kind of wonky. The sounds a little wonky. You're probably going to hear noises in the background, but you know what? If the past two years have taught me anything, it's that I just have to make do with what I have when I have it. And this is what I've got right now. So this is what I'm doing. I would like to try to take control of the things I can control and create a sense of normalcy for myself because um, I don't know how it is for you, but nothing is normal for me yet. Everything is still wild and crazy. So one of the things I wanted to do to try to create a sense of rhythm in my life was to reboot the style project that I so abruptly abandoned two years ago when the world stopped turning. And what better time to start anew than the new year? So happy 2022 and welcome to my signature Style Sunday reboot. In this series, I document my attempt to find my very own sense of style. If you'd like a more in-depth introduction to the series or you would like to see the playlist, I will leave the link to those things in the description. Today's video is going to be more of a refresher, pretty much for me because it's been a while. Um, and I'm also going to give you an update because even though I haven't been documenting things on social media and even though um, I didn't really have the energy to really like put targeted energy into my style journey, I was kind of keeping it in the back of my head. So there were some minor developments, and so I'm just going to kind of list them here. In March of 2020, I had just begun the process of sorting through my wardrobe, and it had taught me a couple of things, three of which I'll mention today simply because I have some updates about them. The first thing that I'll mention is that I learned that I keep a whole lot of my clothing for purely sentimental reasons, you know, things like t-shirts with memories associated with them, stuff like that. And what I had done was I took all of these items that I really no longer wear and put them all into one box. And I told myself, if I don't do anything with the t-shirts in this box, for example, make a t-shirt quilt or, you know, something like that, then I was going to donate the box. Um, to make a long story short, I did nothing with the box for an entire year. <laughs> um, and uh, so I ended up giving it away. I donated all the items. And um, my friend Caroline had suggested that maybe I should just take a picture of my sentimental items so that I can like look through them on my phone and still have the memories. And so that's what I did. And then um, I took the box with me to an event where I knew there were some people who could really use the clothes. It was really fun to see the joy on their faces um, and to know that the clothing was now going to like really get used instead of just sitting in the depths of my drawer wasting away. So, um, that was really good. And I only ended up keeping two of the items. One of them was the shirt that I had mentioned that my grandmother shrunk the last time I went to visit her. And I just couldn't bear to give it away because every time I look at that shirt, I think of her and I really miss her. So what I did was I cut it up and I turned it into a vest that fits. So now I have a functional item of clothing that uh, is also sentimental. And the only other item that I kept was one t-shirt. It was um, the very first t-shirt from the very first festival I ever played where I was in the official lineup. So my name was printed on the back. And so that was like a huge milestone for me. And um, I just kept that and I can wear it to work out, wear it to bed, whatever. Um, it doesn't need to look cool, but it just makes me so happy that I had to keep that one. But other than that, I think I did pretty good. <laughs> The second thing that I learned is that I must really, really, really love comfy clothes because the share of items like hoodies and t-shirts and flannels and leggings in my wardrobe was massive compared to the very glamorous items. And to be honest, I was kind of disappointed by that realization. And I think it's because I had been secretly hoping that I was actually like a really talented undercover fashionista who just didn't realize how cool she was. And um, instead, the reality is that I am a total scruffamuffin. And there is nothing wrong with that. Like comfy clothes, 
are popular for a reason. It is because they're amazing. However, um, it made me realize that I really do have like a hole in my wardrobe because I've got this massive collection of comfy clothes. Um, and then I have like a pretty decent collection of glamorous clothes. And the reason I have those is because I was pretty much, you know, wearing that on stage when I was performing. Um, but like the percentage of like casual, cool glam clothes that I like have and can wear and can look super cool is like zero. (laughs) I've got like none of that. And so that made me realize, okay, like there's room in my wardrobe for some shifting. Um, and so, you know, maybe I can adjust, you know, the proportion of things in my wardrobe and, um, maybe I can create that third category for myself and then I'll be happier with my cool girl, cool girl, scruff a muffin glam self. I don't know. I'll have to think of some sort of some sort of terminology for my goal. But that brings me to my third point. And that is all of my favorite items of clothing, whether they're in the scruff and muffin category or the totally glam stage category, every single one of those items had certain things in common. For example, um, the fabrics were nice to the touch or um, they were solid blocks of color or they had some sort of unique aspect to the way they were cut or made. For example, um, they were very structured or they had an asymmetrical neckline or maybe they had you know, some poofy sleeves, things like that. And that gave me kind of a goal. So when I'm trying to fill that hole in my closet, now I at least know what sorts of things I can aim for. To sum it up, in the past two years, I have let go of my unused clothing items and I have learned that I no longer want to be such a scruff muffin So that means going forward, I am going to have to make a step-by-step plan that will help me make bolder choices, more glamorous choices, and choices that are more reflective of the cool glam girl I'd like to become. If this journey sounds like something you'd like to follow, then please, by all means, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And of course, if you are on your own style journey or there's an aspect of your style that you'd like to change or improve this year, then I hope that you'll share that with me in the comments because I would love to hear from you. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful week that I'll see you again soon and that we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. Thank you.